Welcome one and all to the first ever Puppet History Holiday Special. Today we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy-hitting book we call history while our guests merrily compete for the coveted title of History Master. I am obviously your beloved host, The Professor. Thank you. Ryan Bergara, are you ready? I would say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, but seeing as how I'm here, I'll just say it is a holiday for sure. Oh, sweet of you. Not sweet. Special guest and two-time defending champion, Kate Peterman. Thank you for being here. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Then let us crack it. Now, before we begin, and I know I usually save this for the end, but I'm letting you peek at your Christmas present early. Our musical guest today is friggin' Santa Claus, okay? Oh, wow, you booked him. Yeah, that's you crazy. booked got him. him. It's hard. He's gonna that's be hard. tired. I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous. He's arguably the biggest guest we've ever had on the show, I think. I guess we had God, but... <laughs> is it because you've been naughty? Mr. Oh, Professor? Oh no. I usually get our guests a little thank you gift, like a little scented candle or a fleece or some jay beans. But I got so swept up in the holiday season that I forgot to get anything. Well, I'm kind of spiraling over here. Uh, you guys got any ideas? I get him PTO. It feels like he doesn't have a lot of time off. Yeah, but then I worry that if he takes time off, then next year the kids aren't gonna get the presents and then it's gonna be on me. I hate to be braggy, but I have the best gift and it's okay. a friend. I'm not a great friend, though, is the thing. You could give him your firstborn. Jesus Christ, Kate. Well, as you've probably gathered, in honor of our esteemed guest, we're spending our lesson today getting up to speed on Father Christmas himself, jolly old Saint Nick. Him and I are pen pals. Is that so? Old controversy over here, but I like that guy. Gives me stuff and never asks for anything in return. He asks you to be good. Yeah, but he doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> As sometimes happens with the super famous, a lot of legend surrounds St. Nicholas. Many leading scholars are, in a way, like a lot of 12-year-olds out there. They're not sure St. Nicholas ever really existed at all. As we move through the story, remember that the line between history and myth gets a little blurry sometimes. Let's uh, call it a new thing. We'll call it mystery. What? Oh, so, myth? Yeah, I see. I That's see what right. you're Saint Nicholas, if he did exist, was born in the third century CE in the village of Patara. Why do you keep saying if he was real, by the way? Uh, uh, Possibility all of us aren't real. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait, what? I've gotten a lot more into weed since the last time <laughs> we hung out. Seems like it's a pretty green Christmas out there for Kate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that rosy-cheeked light means it's time for our first bit of trivia. Where was Patara? A, modern-day Turkey. B, modern-day Germany. Or C, modern-day Finland. No idea. Ryan, right, what'd you put? I'm gonna go B for big guy. And Kate? I went with C, MDF, modern-day Finland. Unfortunately, points to neither of you. It was A? Honestly, I probably would've gotten that wrong too. Uh, I don't know much about turkey, but when I think turkey, I don't think Santa. I think gravy. <laughs> Saint Nicholas was born along the southern coast of what is now Turkey, which was then part of the Roman Empire. The son of well-off Christian parents, shocker, Nicholas was orphaned at a young age, and so he dedicated his life to serving God. Due to his piety and enthusiasm for the priesthood, Nicholas was made Bishop of Myra at a relatively early age. Seems irresponsible. It's worth noting, so you aren't surprised when he shows up later, that Saint Nick probably didn't look quite like you'd imagine. He did have white hair and a white beard, but that's probably where the similarities end. An olive-skinned five-foot-six, Nicholas is said to have had a severely broken nose, perhaps the consequence of resisting Christian persecution, which was trendy at the time, or perhaps the result of a fiery, rebellious attitude. When we say broken nose here, we talking like Owen Wilson? That's exactly what we're talking about, my friend. Why? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Reindeer on the rooftop, wow. In 325 CE, an Alexandrian priest named Arius sparked a theological debate within the church. It was basically the ecclesiastical equivalent of arguing whether or not a hot dog's a sandwich, and yet it threatened to completely destroy the church. So to resolve the controversy, over 300 bishops came together in Nicaea to debate the matter. As Arius argued his position, Nicholas allegedly started getting angrier and angrier, growing hotter under the collar than chestnuts roasting on an open fire. So, 
What did Nicholas do? A. He pretended to snore loudly. B. He yelled his own arguments over Arius for three hours straight. Or C. He got up and smacked Arius right in his punk mouth. <laughs> Ryan, what did I'm you I'm gonna play? go C for he clapped him right in the kisser. Clapped him like in that. In the kisser. And Kate. I'm going with B that he talked over him for three hours, because I I hope... think that's probably the right one. I think yeah. yours is the right one, man. I think you picked really well. I think you did a really good job. Oh, I Thank love you. this spirit of camaraderie. Okay, shut up, Professor. Shut the fuck up, Professor. What the hell? Okay, here's a sketch. I'll see you guys later. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's me, Arius, that guy. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Uh, real quick, Arius, what was the point you were making? Like, what are you oh, arguing? Uh, you know, so Jesus was pretty new at this time, right? He's like fresh. Oh. Fresh on the scene, a debutante. One of the arguments was like, well, is Jesus as important as God? And some people were like, no. And other people were like, hell yeah, he is. Time out. You said it was the that day equivalent of is a hot dog a sandwich. Yeah, it kind of is. That's a fair assessment, They're just I think. talking in circles, man. Therefore, I say, how can a man be equal to a god? And furthermore, oh, oh Jesus oh. Christ, who the hell was that? Santa! The name's Nicholas, and don't make me check you twice. Fantastic. Boys to be boy. Nice. Good for you, Ned. I almost called you dad. Good for you, dude. <laughs> dad? Embarrassing. I meant to say dude. For his naughty behavior, the other bishops stripped Nicholas of his bishop clothes and tossed him in the clink. According to legend, Jesus and Mary, those two famous people from the Bible, appeared to him in the night, and their force ghosts gave him new vestments and the Book of Gospels as thanks for standing up for them. When Emperor Constantine learned about this miracle, Nicholas was freed. No way. Uh, I mean, allegedly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you no know such thing. This goes. I'm not gonna let you get under my skin. Okay. This is a holiday and I'm gonna be happy. You know what? Bonus jelly bean for your good spirit. What? Yeah. Oh wow, how about that? RB with an extra JB. In the spirit of the <laughs> season, a bonus bean that's for the beef pretty boy. good. Suck it, Kate. <laughs> Whoa, okay, that's a rotten jelly bean for the beef boy. <laughs> ah, fuck. Well, how about that? Jesus and his mom giving Santa the joint gift of something to read and some clothes. Oh, Christmas crumbs! I still need to get something for St. Nicholas. I know what you could give him. Who was that? It's me. Yeah, that's right. It's me, that old pile of diamonds. Yes! Happy holidays. How you guys been? I've been freaking not great, and it's really nice to see you. It's great to see you too. Uh, anyway, I've got <laughs> some uh, gift ideas for you. It's gonna be uh, a song. Well, I don't know that it's gonna be a song, but get out of the way. <laughs> this Christmas, one again. Something sweet and sentimental. A delicious and so thoughtful. Oh, so very nice. Now maybe do this. Instead of worthless shit, maybe take the hit and dip into those savings for a little something pricey. Gucci, Rolex, Tiffany, a rare illegal foreign cheat. I'll buy you shit that'll make you scream, make your real life feel like a holiday dream. You want a yacht? Okay, why not? A taxidermy, Ocelot, Armani, Prada, and Dio. Anything you want, wrap it up, it's yours. This Christmas, we're gonna spend every dime because the finest gifts are the ones you find on a shelf. This Christmas, we ain't wasting my time trying to read your mind and make you something myself. She makes could have done without that uh, climactic finish of the oh, high notes. Are you? I could have done with so many more of them. I think that ending is what you call a falsetto. <laughs> Take a jelly bean away from him. <laughs> Oh, I heard that funny, funny pun, and you get a pun point for that one. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank this you. is unbelievable. I am trailing. I'm sure you'll make it up. Yeah, I'm the sure you will tend too. To. I gotta start sucking up. Oh my god, that hat looks so nice on you, Professor. No rotten jelly bean cake. Rude. Nice. <laughs> yes. <That's> yeah. Incredibly <laughs> transparent. You know what? That pile of diamonds is on to something. Riches probably do make the best present, but that does seem a tad impersonal. 
Still, I think the takeaway here is that my gift needs to be valuable. You did strike me as kind of like the gift card guy. I strike guy. you with what? Like I'm going to put a fiver in a box and give it to someone? Like you're going to buy an Amazon gift card, print it out, and then just call it a day. If anything, it wouldn't be an Amazon gift card. It would be like a Subway gift card. There you go. Yeah, Subway's good. A week's worth of free footlongs. A footlong lasts me about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What is going on here? Why are we getting along? Okay, so two celebrity ghosts gave some free merch to Nick while he was chilling in jail. And while that certainly must have been something to behold, no one becomes a saint without performing some miracles of their own. And as legend would have it, Nicholas was miracling left and right. He said to have freed some innocent men from death moments before their ordered executions by basically saying, hey, hold on a sec. Another time, he drove away some demons that were terrorizing a village by waving an ax around. <laughs> Wonder what the demons actually were, like just a couple of birds? Yeah. It's like, what's this guy doing? Or they were just some women? Yeah. <laughs> sure, the deeper we get into this story, the more you might be saying, is this even history at all, or is this just a series of make ups And to that I say, yeah, you're right. Mostly seems like bullshit. But it's a holiday special. What are we gonna do? Talk about those guys who played football during World War I? Here's that story. They played football. The end. Now, moving even deeper into crazy town, some stories really push the bounds of what anyone could be expected to believe. One day, Nicholas was strolling past a butcher's shop when he popped in. His saint senses were a tingling, and baby, he wasn't smelling no funky salami. Something was amiss. Oh, what was wrong with the butcher shop? A, the butcher was trapped under a 500 pound cow carcass in the back. B, the butcher had buried a statue of a false god under the floor. Or C, the butcher had been murdering and pickling children. God damn. If it's not C, which I don't think it is, whoever came up with that possible answer is a maniac. That being said, I'm gonna go with C, apocalypse proof You're children. Going with C. Okay, and K? I'm going with A. Trapped under big cow. Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh my god, I'm wrong. That's a pickle vat. Hello, it's me, Nicholas. <laughs> Is uh, anybody home? Uh, yeah, I'm standing right in front of you. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to my butcher shop. Something smells good. What's that in the picklin barrel, fair butcher? Oh boy. Um, normal meat? Mmm. I spit upon your lies. You've the bodies of three boys in there, don't you? Jesus Christ. Uh, no, oh, I that's dark. Don't. Arise, lost, insulted youth. Oh. What the fuck? We are the once murdered pickle boys. Pickled, but raised from the dead by fair Santa Claus. Thank you, Santa Claus. That is not my name yet, but you are welcome. Did he talk to their ghosts? He allegedly raised them from the dead. So he's a necromancer. Um, you know what, guys? I think this might be a bit of a tall tale. Point to Beef Man. Nice. So there's several versions of this story, each more impossible than the last. But the gist of it is that the butcher had murdered three kids years before Nicholas's visit and put their chopped up bodies in a pickling barrel. When Nicholas finally swung by to confront the butcher, he brought the pickle boys back to life. Now this reputation for resurrecting pickled kiddos caused Nicholas to become the patron saint of children. But as to why he's expected to leave them gifts every year, well, that might be informed by a story of Nick's neighborly kindness. Early in Nicholas's life, before he was even a bishop, Nicholas heard about a man who had fallen on some hard times. What misfortune had befallen the poor man? A, he had leprosy and was no longer able to work. B, the same curse that eventually befalls all of God's creatures. An evil genie was pursuing him through time and space to steal something the genie itself had made magical. Or C, he had three daughters. Are we locked in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling. Oh, that's okay. Ron, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna go see he had three daughters because it's ridiculous, but I can't think of a reason why it would be included unless it was true. Okay, Kate. <sighs> I'm going with B. You're uh, 
<laughs> I'm gonna give you a jelly bean for being the first guest to go with one of the genie answers. Ah, oh, fantastic! Here's where you make up your lead. <laughs> Point to Ryan. What a roller coaster of a Christmas day here. Now, it wasn't exactly the daughters that were the problem, but the fact that their father didn't have money for their dowries. Because society at the time was dumb and weird, this meant that the guy would be unable to get his daughters good and married, which apparently was a huge problem. So upon hearing of this man's plight, Nicholas took some of the money he'd inherited from his parents and, under the cover of darkness, tossed a bag of gold into the family's home, where some say it landed in a shoe. Now able to pay for someone to accept her hand, the eldest daughter soon was married. Nicholas repeated his deed twice more, saving all three daughters. This legend led to the tradition of children leaving their shoes out on December 6th, St. Nick's Day, in the hopes of receiving some gifts. This became just one part of the gift-giving season of Christmas, which eventually coalesced largely to, you guessed it, December 25th. Ah, uh, so yeah, dowries for three unmarriable young women. What a splendid gift. Oh, cranberries! I still don't have a gift for old Saint Nick! Oh no! Oh no. I know what you could give him. <gasps> oh no, please, not another song. It's our old friend, the ore that wasn't used to murder a man in cold blood by famed samurai Miyamoto Musashi. Speak freely, passionate paddle. What should I get Saint Nicholas for a gift? I think you should take him on a trip. Oh, okay. This piece? Please clear the stage. I, I need the space. Oh, okay, got it. I used to spend my holidays alone An anthropomorphic old pretty boy Sitting inside of his home, oh no But then you met me, and I suggested we Go on a little holiday trip, little trip. really quick really quick And we went down to the Bahamas for a dear And we just kept going Christmas can be every day When you're traveling the world and you're annoying your gate We ate tangerines in Tokyo Then caught a flight to Borneo And spent a day in Reykjavik The hot dogs, they were pretty sick Every trip you take is a gift When you love the living hell out of the one that you're with We've been to Bangalore and Bogota Head on in rings in Omaha Got high as hell in Amsterdam And ate up all that Christmas ham Well, that was good ham This is the greatest thing I've ever seen And now the future that we make is our own Close your eyes and throw a dart at the map At the map And that's that And that's that off, Off to destinations, destinations unknown. unknown. I hope wherever we go has more ham. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Traveling such a wonderful ride, such a living in a drag without you here by my side, without you here by my side. Now maybe you ought to see some dudes. Chicago just beat the beat, and all the Roma beat the beat. And Dr. Cove, we've got time to hear the France of decent wine. To London where the tea is served, and maybe skip St. Petersburg. Hey, what's the deal with Idaho? Should we bother? I don't know. Singapore, Bora Bora, and the Rock is I adore you. Oh my God, that's a really nice ending. Yeah, let's just call it there. Okay, that's good. Bye. Fantastic. It's fantastic. Huh, okay. Great idea from those oars. Trips are special gifts. But we're talking about a guy who already travels the entire world every year as part of his job. Still, the intent behind their idea is a good one. My gift needs to be memorable. A tattoo. Can't forget it. Like a lower back tat? I mean, it depends on how nasty Santa is. <laughs> <laughs> Tis the season for sleezing, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Sleezin's greetings! It's believed the good Bishop Nicholas died on December 6th, 343 CE. He was entombed in the city of his bishopship, Myra, modern-day Demre, Turkey. This final resting place, however, would turn out to be anything but restful. Why? A. He was resurrected by a bishop, pickle boy style. B. His tomb now sits beneath southern Turkey's most famous discotheque. Or C. Italian sailors plundered his bones. Are we locked in? Uh, I am. I'm locked in. B. For the basement of the discotheque. <laughs> uh, Kate, what do you got? A. A. He resurrected. No, shit. No, he wasn't. Jesus what? was resurrected. No, but the filth little boys. He did resurrect. Do we the have to be boys. here for this uh, argument you're having with yourself. <laughs> you guys take a quick 45. Me and myself have to work this one out out loud. Well, points to neither of you. Frick! Oh, it was the bones, wasn't it? In the 11th century, fearing Christian pilgrims wouldn't be able to reach the bones in the then Arab controlled region, Italian sailors stole the remains of St. Nicholas and took them to Bari on the southeast coast of Italy. There, they constructed the enormous Basilica di San Nicola to house the saint's mortal vessel. 
The Basilica, however, isn't the only place that claims to have some pieces of the Kringle corpse. The thieving sailors are said to have left some bone fragments behind in Myra, which were scooped up later and taken to Venice. His teeth and finger bones are rumored to be scattered amongst over a dozen churches around the globe. In fact, a shard of St. Nicholas's pelvic bone is even said to reside in St. Martha of Bethany Church in the Chicago suburb of Morton Grove, Illinois, an OK suburb that is entirely inferior to Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, this is weird, right? No? I kind of like that. Well, if, like, put it in perspective. If someone went to your grave, KP, and then uh, ripped your skeleton apart and was like, let's ship this one to the loo. Hell yeah. You're going to the Louvre? Yeah, sprinkle me everywhere. There's something kind of sweet to having bits of your body all over the world. If you're gonna take my corpse out, just take the whole skeleton, but only to prop it up permanently in one of the boats from Pirates of the Caribbean. You wanna be? At Disney. All right, dude. That's right. Now, while the bones of all saints are considered relics and therefore venerated by the Catholic Church, St. Nicholas's bones go the extra miracle mile. <laughs> What special property do Santa's bones reportedly have? A. They secrete a healing liquid. B. They're radioactive. Or C. They're still growing. What the fuck? I don't know. Oh, Ryan, I'm gonna go I see for, your answer. Yeah, I'm gonna go for A. Uh, Santa's bone squirts out magic juice. Double yeah. A's. Points to both of you. I went to a restaurant once where they had bone marrow on the menu. I gotta say, that bone was juicy as hell. I sucked the hell out of that bone. Ah, Merry Christmas. When St. Nicholas's remains were still in Turkey, they reportedly oozed an oily healing substance called Anna. Up to 50 milliliters of the bishop's leg nog is collected by priests every May 9th as part of a festival celebrating the anniversary of the remains arriving in Bari. In this way, St. Nick's bones really are the gift that keep on giving. <laughs> Speaking of which, suffering sleigh bells, what am I gonna give St. Nick? Honk, I know what you could give him. Huh? Oh, oh why it's our old friend. Ostrich. Hot chips, it's mummified goose. Out with it, fed and foul. What should I give St. Nicholas for a gift? And I'm gonna guess you're gonna sing a song, so take it away. Well, the winter snows are falling and you know your friends are all expecting gifts so, so unique. And you really better now, because you know that you'll have found them if they're not knocked off their feet. You can get a coffee, slipper, season tickets to the Clippers at the Zoom, play and try a little twos. So the locks are woolly socks, fancy chocolates in a box, funny shirt, the fly throw away by June. But if you want to get them something cool, nip and noops, give the rest a mummified, give the rest a mummified, give the rest a mummified goose. Can you imagine all the clapping through the chair away the rapid and lee eyes upon an inch of dusty bird? Some olive bones of very own to grace a mantle in their home of fire and security and presently preserved. So listen, Nate, this holiday, I'm not sure what else I can say, but if you really want to throw for a loop, you find a goose and wake up, but you wrap it up from each foot. And give the rest a mummified, give the rest a mummified, give the rest a mummified, give the rest a mummified goose. That's a lot. Got punched in the face by that song. Huh. Okay. Well. I don't think I'm gonna get St. Nicholas a mummified goose, uh, but I think I'm picking up what that goose is laying down. <laughs> My gift needs to be one of a kind. With the Protestant Reformation in 16th century Europe, Nicholas went the way of many saints and was largely forgotten, except in the Netherlands. The dear old Dutch were the only ones to never abandon St. Nicholas, who they called Sinterklaas, and still expected him to show up with treats on December 6th. They brought this tradition along with them to their colonies in America, specifically New Amsterdam, now New York. <laughs> anyway, there, Sinterklaas morphed to Santa Claus, and the image of an old bishop walking around filling kids' shoes merged with a whole slew of creepy German and Nordic folktales about magical figures who punished naughty children while rewarding the good. At the beginning of the 19th century, poets and writers began reimagining the physical image of St. Nicholas, and in doing so, created the jolly fella we're all familiar with today. Released in 1809, Washington Irving's Knickerbocker's History of New York introduced America to a St. Nick who smoked a pipe and captained a flying wagon for efficient gift distribution. In 1821, the poem The Children's Friend added a reindeer to the wagon and a fur coat to Santa's back. 
The next year, Clement Clark Moore wrote The Night Before Christmas for his children, which expanded the team pulling the sled to eight reindeer and expanded St. Nicholas's belly to the round bowl full of jelly. When political cartoonist Thomas Nast started depicting the great gift giver as a rotund man in a flamboyant suit during the American Civil War, our modern image of Santa had finally arrived. If I could chalk up me putting on an extra couple pounds over the years just to an artist's choice, I'd like that. It is an artist's choice. Your body Popcorn. is your canvas. You know Every that. time I eat another Burger. cookie, I'm like, this is the artist's choice. My body is the most beautiful canvas. <laughs> I am the Michelangelo of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, there's some commotion back there. Hang on a sec. Oh, holy shit, Santa's here. Uh, okay, this is the part of the show where I usually tally up the history points and award the coveted cup. But you know what? In the spirit of the season, I got you guys little presents instead. <gasps> That's right. Very convenient mm. that mm. we would uh, abandon the trophy this episode is all I'll say. not abandoning the trophy. It's just it's the spirit of giving, and I've gotten you guys little gifts. Oh, my God. Let's take them one at a time. Kate, why don't you open yours first? It's so sweet. To Kate from the professor, the tiny bow and everything. Oh my God. I got William Shakespeare's famous last words. Yeah, it's a little book of Shakespeare quotes. This is honest to God, the sweetest present. And uh-oh, I haven't cried properly in a minute. Oh, no. You know, I thought you'd enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, shit. oh my god, and it's an ornament! Yeah, you can hang that on your little tree! Oh well, thank you for setting the stage, Kate, because now when I open my present, I'm gonna look like a ungrateful little shit. Well, <laughs> just fake it, Ryan! Uh, to Ryan from the professor, a little green bow on there. It's pretty cute. Looks like a, a tiny $100 bill, but it's a... <laughs> oh! How thoughtful. Ryan said he... You were a gift card guy, and you literally gave him money. They spent it on like one night at Taco Bell for you. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Oh God, oh God, he's here. Oh, Jesus. Season's greetings, child. It is I, Horrifying. the gushing bones of St. Nicholas. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to visit us. I know you're uh, incredibly busy. Yes, I am. Take it away. Take what away? Our guests usually sing a little. Sing? Song. What do I have to sing for? I am an absolutely sopping wet pile of bones. My life is perpetual soaking misery. <laughs> this is kind of awkward. I don't know what to do. What if you sang him a song, Professor? Me? Sing a song for him? Yeah. What greater gift is there than the gift of song? Okay, well, here goes nothing. Ooh, oh, oh. Christmas 2020. Fuck this year. This Christmas. My wish list isn't so much about the getting, but the hope that I can give. St. Nicholas, a gift that lets him know how much we love him, if in fact he ever really even lived. Santa Claus, Santa Claus. you are magic. But you also maybe weren't real. Maybe weren't real. You slapped that guy. But you slapped that guy. Who maybe shit himself to death. Maybe shit himself look to death. Up. Look it up. We didn't cover it because it was kind of tangential. But he allegedly shit himself to death. Here's here's a drawing. Santa Claus. Just save the pickle boy. We did a bunch of other stuff too. And now you're born. But even bones deserve some love So here's a song From me to you Santa Claus Santa Claus Say Nicholas, you You look like you want to sing Do Do you want to sing? Oh Okay 
Thanks, Professor, for that sweet, sweet song. I was a real Grinch, but now I see that I was wrong. The holiday season's not the time for holding grudges. It's the time for giving gifts and eating cheese and tasting grudges. I'm old Saint Nick, and I'm here to say, I used to be a bishop on a bones today. Every year I bring joys and toys to kids, but frankly, there's lots of other things that I did. Hmm, like what? Oh, hmm, one thing comes to mind. Saint Nicholas saved the pickle boy. He just heard I saved the pickle boy. So the son Bob that's what you sure she can bet that Saint Nicholas saved the pickle boy. Now what did I do? You saved the pickle boy. The pickle who? The pickle boys? Who killed the butcher too? Wait, did you kill the butcher? Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, recently barreled by a psychotic butcher, but resurrected by the clown prince of Christmas, aka yours truly. Put your hands together for the Pickle Boys! The Pickle Boys, the Pickle Boys, do the Pickle Dance, do the Pickle Dance, what you kill do, but then I say you, you don't dance well, they're really not good at dancing. They, they don't look well. No, they don't. Are they okay? Maybe I shouldn't have meddled and brought them back to life. St. Nicholas killed the Pickle Boys, I mean, saved the Pickle Boys. Oh, yeah! Uh, are you just going to keep singing about the Pickle Boys? Yes, I'm just very proud of what I did with the Pickle Boys. All right, well, I think Saint that about does it for this one. Uh, Ryan, Kate, Merry Christmas, you two. Everybody, thanks for watching. We'll see you next year. Wow! Save the Pickle Boys. Ain't you heard I say the Pickle Boys? Sounds absurd and far-fetched, but you sure as shit can bet that St. Nicholas saved the Pickle Boys. Now what I do? Save the Pickle Boys. The Pickle Boys. Save the Pickle Boys. Oh, oh, oh.